patient assessment mainly through transthoracic echocardiogram and angiogram and ct method uh, mainly uh, tower protocols uh, uh, tower to be evaluated whether if it's uh, suitability of uh, iliofemoral access so there are different accesses iliofemoral access is the mostly most commonly used access so we should see whether the access is there or if there is any obstruction uh, and for the evaluation ct is uh, must and the aortic root, the dilatation, the annular height, the uh, coronary height, and whether the calcium score, uh, how significant is the calcium, and this needs to be assessed mainly in the CT. So this is how generally we assess the CT, aortic root, the base, the plane, uh, the annular plane, and the height of the coronaries, right coronary artery, left coronary artery, and the size area of the... area or uh, area of the annular area uh, so that we measure the for itself and decide which valve is to be so this you can see how we assess the femoral axis uh, so the area of femoral axis whether there is any torch for ct uh, so where exactly uh, we need to go go through and uh, any calcification any calcification involvement and uh, how high is the bifurcation all these things to be assessed in the ct so this you can see the annular and the valvular calcification and the annular calcification and the height of the coronaries and the leaflet calcification is will be assessed uh, pre in the pre-assessment in seat. So valve size selection, sizing of the aortic annulus and aortic root is done using the transesophageal echo and CT angiography. Recent data supports use of CT angiogram as superior to uh, TE. Valve size we always take 10 to 20 percent larger than the measure diameter. The selection of tower valve. Uh, so selection of tower valve uh, will be mainly whether it's a expandable valve, non-expandable, self-expandable valve. Uh, so we need to decide based on the risk of annular rupture, concern about coronary obstruction, the height of the coronaries, valve in valve procedures, asymmetric calcification, uh, and uh, considerations based on the patient's uh, 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 anatomy uh, and the coronary access also. So in 2021 ESC guidelines, I mean, there is a, the class one indication that involves uh, patients who are uh, operable and unsuitable for transfemoral uh, TAVI, uh, SAV is recommended. And uh, TAVI is recommended in older patients more than 75 years uh, or unsuitable for surgery. It's a class one indication. And SAV or TAVI are recommended for remaining patients based on their individual clinical, anatomical, and uh, procedural characteristics. So non transformable uh, TAVI may be considered in patients who are inoperable for uh, SAVR and unsuitable for uh, transfemoral if any obstruction anything is there. It is a class 2B indication. And surgery is recommended in asymptomatic patients with LV dysfunction if uh, ancestral diameter more than or equal to 40 and uh, or EF less than 60, class 1 indication in new guidelines. So mainly contraindications to TAVA. So if the estimated life expectancy is less than 12 months uh, or uh, improvement of quality of life by TAVI is unlikely or severe other valvular uh, diseases and inadequate uh, annular size or if any active endocarditis and if any elevated risk of coronary ostium obstruction if the height of the coronary ostium is uh, small or uh, and asymmetric valve calcification, low coronary, coronary ostial height and adverse uh, aortic root. So there are immediate and late complications in uh, TAVI. Uh, immediate uh, complications are uh, complete heart block in 2 to 4 percent, major stroke in 1 percent, vascular complications around 3 to 5 percent, paravalvular leak is 3 to 6 percent, cardiac rupture is rare, valve embolization is rare. So late, these are the immediate complications. Late complications, uh, conduction system disorder, the complete heart blocks are uh, hard, any um, type 2 heart blocks can occur in a little later phase. Uh, infective endocarditis as we use different material across the aortic wall, infective endocarditis is one of the late complications. Valve thrombosis and valve degeneration we see in the late uh, uh, complications of TAV. Durabilities and the different uh, guidelines where we, need, we use uh, the dual antiquated therapy, single antiquated therapy.